In John 4, 13 through 14, we hear that Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks from the water that I will give will never be thirsty again. The water that I give will become in those who drink it a spring of water that bubbles up into eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Okay, I'm a little more excited than you are. Good morning. I am so absolutely and wonderfully thrilled to be able to share with you today about our wonderful experience in Slidell, Louisiana, working with Epworth Project. Youth, can you believe that this time last month we were in Louisiana? Yeah, that was a month ago. On Sunday morning, June 22nd, really, really early in the morning, 29 of us set out for Louisiana, and we met God there, and God met us there. And it was a really powerful week. And as hopefully you can see from the video, these youth truly embraced the idea of work hard, play hard, because they gave it all they had. I've never seen kids work that hard, but they did. And they did it all with a smile on their face and joy in their heart. And I'm so thankful and grateful for them. So those of you who went on the mission trip to Louisiana, will you please stand up for me so everybody can see you? It was a great trip. You can have a seat. Now I have three youth that are going to share with you some of their experiences that they learned on the trip, and I asked them to answer these two questions. The first one is simple. Where did you see God? And the second one is how were you revived? So first off, Alyssa is going to share with us. Since we were the biggest youth group at Epworth, they split us up into two groups. The group I was in had the job of cleaning and gutting out a house. When I first saw the house, I was amazed at the amount of damage this house had even years after the storm. We all wore gloves and masks. When we got there, we moved all the things we were able to with our hands and then took brooms and put all the little things and pieces of the wall into a pile and others shoveled it up. While some were sweeping and shoveling on one side of the house, others took hammers and attacked the wall up to four feet. I saw God in the amount of time it took us to clean out and gut the house by all of us working together for two days. This revived me because it showed me that a small group of teenagers can make a big impact in the lives of others. Now Devin is going to share. This was my first summer mission trip, and it was, I was really excited for it all week, but I wasn't excited enough to get up because I was at least 20 minutes late. <laughs> and um, I saw God, and every morning when I woke up, everyone's bright and shining faces. They were all very sleepy, but they were all just ready and willing to work. Um, in the mission trip, I faced one of my big fears. I'm really, like, I'm not a germaphobe, but I don't like messing with dirty things. <laughs> and... <laughs> I was with Alyssa gutting the house, and um, I walked into the house, and I just immediately put on my mask, because I was terrified. Um, God revived me and helped me face my fear, and he showed me that, you know, I can, I can do things, and um, he gave me the strength to do all that. And now Courtney Martin. Hi. When we were in Louisiana through Epworth Project, I saw God in many different ways and places. I was at a different work site than Devin and Alyssa, so my week looked a little different than theirs. Um, our group was hanging drywall in a house that had received significant water damage from Hurricane Katrina. So this was really challenging for a group with limited construction knowledge. Um, so I saw God through my group's ability to work together to get the job done. And when we were on the mission site, me and Miss Rhonda also had an exciting personal accomplishment when we were able to hang drywall in this huge archway that was uneven. It took us hours of measuring and cutting and the help of our team, but we eventually got the project done and it looked fantastic. Um, I also saw God in the energy of New Orleans whenever we were given the opportunity to explore it. 
And lastly, I saw God in our group's ability to bond as a team whenever we were together on this trip. Um, um, I found working on the house to be like the most reviving part of the trip because it tested my patience and it was humbling. Out of all the mission trips I've been on, day one of hanging drywall and day three of taping the ceiling was the most frustrating, terrible work I've ever done in my life. <laughs> so, um, but it reassured me that I have the strength to handle whatever the world has in store for me this year. Honesty hour? <sighs> On the first night that we were at Epworth Project in Slido, Louisiana, the staff introduced the summer's theme to us, Revive. And their praise band sang the song, Washed by the Water, which was one of the songs that was played in the photo slideshow. And I was struck by the words of the song that said, even when the rain falls, even when the flood starts rising, even when the storms come, I am washed by the water. Water is a double-edged sword in Louisiana. It is hot and it is humid. And water is key to survival. From the first day we were there, even before we got there, they sent us email after email after email saying, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. We were told to drink eight to 10 bottles of water a day. And we were actually only the second week in their 10 year span of ministry that didn't have to send someone to the hospital for dehydration. Because I told our group, I said, I am not taking you to the hospital because you didn't drink enough water. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Don't got time for that. We're here to work. It's true. Water gives life. Water makes things grow. It sustains us. But water is also responsible for loss and destruction to the people of Louisiana. It's taken away life and homes and comfort. For those still suffering from Hurricane Katrina and Isaac, water is power. Two of the homes that we worked on had been uninhabitable since Hurricane Isaac and still had damage that had yet to be repaired from Katrina before Isaac hit. The homes that we worked in were shocking. When you walked in, it instantly made you count your blessings. Because how could someone live in this situation? And a lot of them couldn't. While we were in Louisiana, I learned a lot of lessons. I learned that life happens and we can either let it defeat us or make us better. I learned that people make mistakes including me. I learned that this group of youth is more amazing than even I thought. And you all know how much I believe in and love these youth. They amazed me. I learned that pride sometimes has to be set aside in order to get a job done and to reach a greater goal of serving others. And I learned that over the course of this week, each of us had something in us that we didn't know was there or that we didn't know we could do. From the youth who mudded and spackled walls and ceilings to the point of impressing our supervisors. To allowing someone to teach you how to hang drywall and to be patient to adjust even when things got a little complicated. To having the dedication to clean out and to gut a home at the four foot level that was full of mold and dirt and grime to texturing a tiny room, even when things got a little fuzzy, to reaching out and welcoming new members of our youth group and to letting others welcome you into the youth group and to watching them bond together in a way that I never knew 29 individuals could. There was one moment that probably one of the ones that touched me the most was on the video and it was when we were all in the lake. And we'd all had a really, really tough work day. It was hot, we were sweaty, we were sore, we were exhausted. But yet all of us came together in the lake and we all played. And it wasn't this group over here or this group over here or this group over here. It was all of us together. And how rare is it for 29 individuals to be able to have that bond, to set aside our differences, 
and where we go to school or how we've grown up and to just be a youth group family. And that's the thing that I love so much about this group. And then I watched us all push ourselves to our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual limits. Yet we found that we could do it. We were washed by the water. Just like water can refine and erode the land, I believe that God's living water does that within us. As much as I love these youth, they all had something that needed to be eroded this week. And including me. Some of us, it was our pride, and others, it was fear. Some was shyness and insecurity. And I'm sure there were others, like fear of dirt, that I didn't even know were going on. Yet we all grew. And it might have rained on us really, really hard while we were growing, but we grew. I've always heard people say trial by fire, but this week made me a firm believer of trial by water. Because we dealt with a lot of water but it was good, and we grew. And this week, it really hit me because of the devastation that we've had to face downtown. Our experience a month ago really made it that much more real to me what happened. That even when the fires burn, God is at work and God is with us. The scripture that Rob read today is the meeting of Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well. In a windy somewhere in Mississippi, we had a closing worship where I shared that scripture with the youth. Jesus knew all about that woman, just like he knows all about us. He knew her faults, her failings, her secrets, and her insecurities, and he offered her living water. Water that pushed her to see things about herself that weren't the prettiest, But he also showed her the true value that was in herself. And I believe the same is offered to us. When we accept to drink of the living water, we'll see things that we may not like. But yet we'll see potential in ourselves to grow that we didn't even know. And I want to challenge you to look at your life and to look at where you're at and to search yourself. Where do you need to be refined? Where does God need to come in and erode some things? Or to move some things around? Or do you just need a really good scrubbing? And where do you need to be revived? Where do you need God to come in and get you excited? And get you flowing and growing? Let God work in those areas. And in response to that, just like the woman did, we're called to go and tell the others. Since our trip, Jamie, the lady at Epworth Project, has called me or texted me multiple times saying that she misses our group. And that, like they called us, that Kentucky group, because we were, was one of the best groups they'd ever worked with. Now let me say that again. This ministry that has been around for 10 years and it is capable of working 2,000 volunteers a summer for 10 years complimented our youth multiple times. They said that they've never seen a group work like ours did. Be proud of our youth. Be proud. I've said it before and I'll say it again. These youth are changing the world. They love God and they love people in a way that inspires me so much. So church family, thank you for your support of youth missions. And prayer partners, thank you for lifting us up while we were gone. And thank you all for empowering us to go out into the world and to love like Jesus has taught us to love. And we hope you'll keep supporting us as we start looking at what youth missions will look like in the years to come. God has called us to do our part to make the world better, and we have accepted. So as we are serving and living in this life, even when the fires burn, the rain falls, The floods rise and the storms come. We trust that God is molding us. He's shaping us. God is washing us. God is making us better so we can go out and make the world better. And by accepting the gift of the living water that Jesus has offered us, it's our turn to go out and spread that living water in how we live our lives. We've been revived. Let's go tell the others.
Thanks be to God.